beep, beep. What is up, ninjas? My name is Sam World, and welcome. In today's video, we're going to be looking at some of the sounds from a track called Superpowers, the Dimitri Vegas edit, which has artists like, I believe, Vintage Culture, uh, LK Senkan, and then this vocalist maybe called Joel. Uh, but we're looking, going to be looking at the sounds, how the bass is made, how to get something very similar to it, how one bass fill in there is made. Now, I feel like bass fills are super important, as these are the little things that just separate, like, top producers let's say from more of the intermediate amateur ones like me and a lot of us so again it's always good to hear these songs and kind of dissect them down and see how these sounds are made so maybe we can use some of this and get inspired off it to do in our own tracks we'll also be looking of course at the lead in the song but with that being said guys if you want to support the channel make sure to check out the brand new deja vu pack which is going to have a lot of these kind of sounds that you can use in your own productions with that being said let's get started with this video guys the first thing we're going to be looking at guys is the lead which has this sort of kind of vocalish aspect to it now of course it could have sampled maybe the vocal from the song and ran it through a sampler or maybe they could have done it around the lengths of this way uh, now the way i would approach making this lead which is going to sound like this okay the lead itself is going to be a saw but we can run two three if you want to but we're going to go with a saw and the way that it gets sort of like that vocal aspect to it is going to be due to the filter having a high resonance running into some heavy distortion and some EQing in the way that you want to do it. So if we were to remake this lead, all we really have to do is shape the sound with a very short decay, some attack to it, utilize a filter and run it through there and of course have the MIDI melody. From there we're going to run it through some heavy distortion. And let's put some resonance on the filter. Now I'm going to get rid of the reverb just so you can see how it sounds like without it. Now you can see that resonance down. We lose that vocal aspect. And what's going on is that as the filter is opening up, we're boosting and we're getting this sort of drag, uh, sort of like fill that occurs on it, like wah. And that flaw runs into our distortion that creates that really nice sort of vocalish effect. And I can get different kind of response. Depending on how I run it. But I think the tube one is just the right amount of heavy distortion without sounding too obnoxious. Now from here, there are some mistakes that occur. A lot of times you can put the attack too high. And then while it might sound okay, you notice in your track, it sounds a little out of sync. So that's why it's very important that you get very specific with the attack, even if it's milliseconds. From there, let's just put an EQ to get rid of some of the nasty kind of fundamental. And uh, just some reverb. From there, you know, you definitely want to mix and have fun. And we can switch the saw to like different ones, which give a little change of different tone to it, like the Juno one. Sounds a little warmer and not as raspy and bright and, and not warmful like the other one. But this is how we make the lead. From there, you can mono legato or add always if you like the uh, sort of swells. So now let's look at the bass. Now, the bass is definitely the the major attraction of this track and in all honesty i think i could have done a little better job at making sure like the bottom layer sustains out a little more but what we're going to have guys first off is going to have a low layer base which is going to be essentially you could do any combination of sorts you can even have just a sign that gets distorted or saturated but i use a combination of a sign and a saw now the most important thing i feel like when it comes to making uh subs for your tracks or like the low end part is to make sure that the retrig is set in silent one there's a button for it but in a um in serum you have to put this arm face down now there's a reason why and if i play this and move the phase around you can see at certain parts it might sound a little weird like there uh, and that just has to deal with the way that these waves are interacting with each other as you can see there, now if we go both on the end. Okay, now we move the saw somewhere weird. You can see how we lose a lot of power and that just has to deal with the phases. Maybe there's some sort of phase cancellation going on inside as these guys collide together. So it's very important that the arm face is down and you do pay a little bit of attention to your face uh, where you're setting the starting point for your wave. 
From there, you definitely want to fatten out the, the low end so we can use the black box, which is from Plugin Alliance. I recommend you get it on sale. It's 50 bucks. It's a really good saturator. I'm a huge fan of Decapitator, Black Box, uh, and, and Fat Filter Saturn. Uh, but, and I meant to say Sound Toys Decapitator. These three are like my favorite saturators. Um, if I want something more analog, I'll go Decapitator, but Black Box also supplies that. And it sounds really good. So we can utilize that. We'll put it at flat because when we put it low, it's like we get a little baby down there in the low end. And from there, you're just going to EQ. So you're just going to set this guy up to the way that you want it to EQ. Now, if you want to add the knock to your bass as well, like the low end part, again, you can experiment with this. Maybe all of them combine to give you a knock. We can go into our source envelope three, route that to our global master tune, which is going to route it to our pitch. From there, we're going to put a bit like so, and then add no sustain, no release, no attack, just decay. If you want to add that knock. For me, I'm just going to leave it like this. Just want a standard low end running through obviously like a side chain on the channel and that's about it and here let's get rid of the supercharger okay from there we're going to move on to our second layer which i feel is the more important layer it's the one that you actually hear more now this one was a bit tricky and in all honesty i don't feel like i'm 100 percent of the way there he could have used the notorious vengeance shot which one shot which you can use as well if you want to make it different then you can follow this route now with this patch here, what we're creating is a mid layer, which is gonna be the top part of the base. It has no low end to it, but it's gonna give us that knock that we want. This is the guy that's really gonna take it further. It's, it's, the, it's the one friend you have that's like, never let me down, man. All right, so the way we make this, and, and I'll, I'll kind of show you guys from scratch. We'll just kind of initialize this because this one's a little bit more like to it. Uh, first off, you're gonna wanna find a wavetable. Now, what I find in Slap House so far is that a lot of people are utilizing FM wavetables. There's a specific sound to them uh, that as you do sound design or as you familiarize yourself with these sounds, you'll kind of pick up on it. Uh, for instance, I could go with that second. We're gonna put that negative three all the way down for me for my MIDI. Okay, from there, we're just gonna kind of shape it. Envelope three, and this is the guy that's gonna give it a bit of knock. So we're gonna go envelope three, two again, our master or global master tune. You gotta be really kind of precise with it. Okay, from there we can run a filter if needed to shape the sound even further so that it's not going all over the place. We're running OTT, which a lot of people say that it ruins the high end. The good thing with the sound is we're not going to be getting that high end. We want it just for like that superly compressed vibe. Now, the cool thing here is that I can switch this around to like different waves. Let's find one that's good. Like this one's okay if I pull it down more. Let's see, let's find one that's not. We this one's good. Like if we layer that with, we get a different vibe out of it for sure. Again, we wanna mess with that face because you got at least three waves going right now. We can go with I can has kick, which is very popular. You can see how each one is just changing everything like cream. And then from there, if you want to even get more creative, let's say, okay, I like the, I like the v Dimitri Vegas edit send, but you know, I want to make something myself. Then you can start playing around with getting these kind of elements into play. But in all honesty, for me, I think simplicity is always best. So I go with the FM one that we have. Okay, and then from there, we're going to have our OTT going, but now we're going to bring back dynamics into play. Control some of that high end that tends to happen that messes stuff up, like Fox Stevenson said, and just. There we go. Notice how when I move that face, there's a big change in the sound. And again, that's something that you want to kind of do. That's why I always tell people, it's good that you understand some form of sound design. You don't have to be expert, but you're making presets like, 
like like yeah like so because i feel like better time spent if you're trying to become a producer and other things and outsource your sounds to people like me that make sounds for a living but anyways um we're gonna have that we have our knock uh from there you can add reverb you can do a lot of cool stuff i'm just gonna eq it more And then you can make this even brighter if you want, like sorts. Now, this is a really cool trick you want to try um, that I learned from someone in a stream where you can kind of pull this down and push this up. In fact, let's make, uh, let's not use this guy. We'll probably use maybe the envelope so that way we give it. Just more dynamics into the sound being played and that's about it. So we're going to put it together. You can see that's our layer. You can push that further. So for instance, I like to use black box on it. And that just pushes it with black box, literally very easy to use. We just increase the pen toad. Um, again, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what that means, but I do know that it saturates further from there. Saturation maybe high, flat. We get that really juicy. And from there you might think, you know, midlows are too much. you might decide to ease up on those. From there, our top layer is one of the simplest ones. And in all honesty, we just utilize a click from Serum. We go into the attack kicks and we can set up anyone we like. And from there, just make sure if you have low end in that guy to just be careful with that. So that way we can control this base. We want more knock. You increase the top layer, you want more mids. You increase that. The thing with doing it this way that I'm scared of for a lot of people is that now you have three things, newly added things that you have to level. So my best advice for you guys is if you're going to be doing this is to level that properly to where you feel it sounds right. And then from there, just minimize the shit out of this and utilize this guy here, your bass, uh, this guy here to just kind of make it go up and down like sorts. You can also use a utility if needed. And from there, um, you can use more compression. Personally, me, I'm a huge fan of the Supercharger GT for the slap house genre. I just like what the warm does to it. It kind of makes it so it just doesn't sound so like high endy in a way, which is what we want. And of course, there's a bit of saturation and the compression. You can kind of debate. It takes the guessing work out of it. And if you want punch, just go punch. I really like the way that sounds. So if I go with the kick I have, we're going to bring the kick in here real fast. Just. which I think sounds badass. So that's gonna be um, the main base of the track. And finally guys, the last interesting thing I wanted to talk about with this track for the sounds is gonna be this bass feel that occurs, which is gonna have essentially your sub pitching down and then you're gonna have another bass opening up, which is gonna sound something similar to this. Uh, and that sounds really cool. Uh, and it's a combination of two sounds. The one, we have our sub, which you can, again, make a, a duplicate if you want, because Ableton's very finicky with that damn pitch bend staying there. But we have this new sound introduced. Now, I made a video about this on my Instagram, which you guys can check out over at SimWorld Music. Um, and the idea with this is that we're going to have the bass going down. And as it pitches down, obviously, we're losing volume because the lower we go, the lower perceived loudness we have. And as that is happening, we have this saw sort of coming up slowly with an LFO attached to the cutoff. Now, as I hear his song, he decided to go with somewhat of a bit crusher effect on top of the saw, which creates this really cool effect. So the sub is going to be going down like seal which sounds really cool. Now, a couple of tips with that that I want to give you. One, in the bottom left of Serum, which is a side of Serum not a lot of people like to go into, we do have a pitch bend range, negative 12, 2. By default, it's set like this. Now, the, the cool thing about this is that you can set your pitch bend to go all the way down to max. And from there, you control how low you go. You can even make it go up. If for some reason, that's what you want. But it would go negative 12. So down an octave from where we're at. And that's what creates a sort of like boom and lets us go even lower with it. Uh, something that not a lot of people know. Now, the way that um, I believe uh, uh, the guy, whoever produced this, um, made this bend was to utilize make control. And then it had this slope. So in Ableton, you can hold alt as you click here in the slope. And that allows us to kind of mess with this, making it a little more humanized, if you want to say that. Uh, we kind of bring it down more like this. We go up. Those are little clutch things that not a lot of us think about. We just do the pitch bend and not think. But the pros, they'll be like, okay, I did that pitch bend, but now I can mess with this. 
Okay, now as that is going on, we do have a base with a saw opening up. I'm all over the place. ADD zone. Alpha one routed there. Envelope mode on one four. And it's going to be doing this from there. But when you play these two together, you get that. And from there, I did add a sample and hold. And the cool thing about this guy is now you you can widen it. You can do change the sound to sign up on it. Uh, again, Alok likes to do stuff where he'll probably have something like not like that but that's a little too much let's get rid of the sample not sounding as clean as i'd want it to but you get the idea with it maybe it shouldn't open up all the way god help us right now oh no i'm looking bad on this tutorial that's for sure man uh but you i think you get the idea guys i think saws or squares are usually going to sound more meteor Now, I feel like the one he used works just because it's not that tonal. The sample and hold kind of makes it sound a little like it's not, it doesn't have a set tone to it, and that's why it kind of works. Other than that, those are going to be the main sounds from the track that I wanted you guys to check out. Some stuff that I didn't talk about in the lead is that there is a bit of reverb automation going on with the lead, which I think is super cool. For me, these kind of things, I usually like to run like endless smile on them, uh, mainly because I just like the way that sounds. And from there, like you automate. <laughs> And the last thing I'll leave you guys with is that in Ableton, we can make a new channel, resample that, and then we can maybe like do some cool stuff where we run this lead with Endless Small at 100%. For some reason, you might want it like that. And then we just record that. And then you can have more control over the way that it comes in. So check it out. Okay. And from there, you know, you kind of get rid of the Endless Smile. And then you can bring this in at specific parts. Like, let's say you're like, okay, there's a little gap there. I got to fill every gap. I'm going to play it like that. Then... <laughs> Oh man, you already heard it. Uh, let's do uh, this. Um, and there's another little gap there. Maybe we can fill that up. <laughs> again, guys, I'll, uh, you know me. I'm married, but I like to fill gaps. Um, yeah, and, and again, you don't probably want to do it like this, but you get the idea. I have so much control over it now that I could do like reverses into reverses, filling gaps and gaps. Guy ain't taking care of his girl. I'm coming in with a reverse reverb. <laughs> if that's what you want but nah i'll do it like this where it's kind of like really cool because now we get something like and again this is and you can make that tight and really cool anyways guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm trying to kind of focus more on stuff that i'm really good at for my youtube tutorials uh and i hope that you found this helpful in any form of way maybe the base flow was like wow i need to try out these kind of things to take my production to a new level etc but you guys have fun at the end of the day that's what it's all about and if you want to support the channel evilsounds.com you can find all of my sound design work there guys i have packs on palm packs for a lot of different genres used by a lot of the big names uh and again i always appreciate your support as you guys help me keep going support my family with what i love doing and hopefully you guys will use these sounds to do what you love to do and that is create some tracks that you can release you guys take care and peace out